Welcome to our review on ions, atoms and isotopes. So the first thing we're going to have a look at are ions. And whenever we're talking about an ion, we're talking about a charged atom or a charged group of atoms. And what we find is that these ions form if an atom either gains or loses one or more of its electrons. So at the bottom, I've given you some examples of what I mean here. So if we start off with a sodium atom, no charge, then what's going to happen is it's going to lose an electron and therefore form a sodium ion, which is Na+, and we've got the electron that's spare there. If we think about magnesium, that becomes Mg2+, because it's lost two electrons. If we then jump to the right-hand side of the periodic table, we find chlorine and oxygen, and these ones gain electrons. So chlorine gains a single electron to become a Cl minus ion and oxygen will gain two electrons to become O2 minus ions. And you can work that out from the periodic table because anything that's in group one is going to lose one electron, so forms a single positive ion. If it's in group two, loses two electrons and becomes two plus ions. And then jumping to the right, if it's in group seven, then it gains one electron to become a single negative ion. And if it's in group six, it's going to gain two electrons to become a double negative ion. A really important point to remember now when we're writing our ions, you always write the charge to the top right of the symbol. So you don't put it level with it, you don't put it at the bottom, it's always to the top right of the symbol you're using. In our previous video, we had a look at how we could work out the number of protons, electrons and neutrons present in any atom from the periodic table. We do need to also be able to do this for ions. So if we think about our lithium, that's an Li plus ion, then what we actually find is that the one number that will change is the number of electrons. So we can still work out our protons and neutrons the same as we did before. So for the protons, look at your atomic number, write it in, in this case three. For the neutrons, mass number minus the atomic number, so seven minus three gives us four neutrons. Now the electrons, if it's an atom, they're always the same as the protons, but we have an ion, so it's got a single positive charge. This tells us there's one more proton than electrons. So that means if we've got three protons, we will only have two electrons. So just remember that with the ions, that the electrons will change. The next thing is the isotope. So we need to learn the definition for an isotope first of all. And the definition you need to remember is it's an atom of the same element that has the same number of protons and electrons, but a different number of neutrons. So what we actually remember it as is that the atomic number is the same, but the mass number is different. Because remember the mass number is the protons plus the neutrons, and therefore the neutrons is the thing that's changing. To give you an example of what I mean by isotopes, then carbon doesn't just exist as one type of atom. We've actually got several different isotopes. So we write them as I've shown you at the bottom there. So carbon 12, carbon 13, and carbon 14. So you'll notice that each time the atomic number is six because that's not changing, but the mass number is going up by one as you go down, which tells us that we're getting one more neutron each time we go down that list. One of the key things about isotopes that's going to be important when we look at it a bit more in our chemistry and our physics courses is that some of these isotopes are actually radioactive. And the reason that they're radioactive is because that extra neutron that they're gaining is making the nucleus unstable. And unstable nuclei break down through a process of radioactive decay, which you'll learn about more in your physics course. When we're considering those different isotopes, then they also have different physical properties, like their density, but they have the same chemical properties because any chemical reaction is dependent upon the electronic structure. And as we've already said, all of the isotopes of any given element have the same number of electrons and therefore they have the same electronic configuration. 
Hopefully at the end of this video, you can now describe an ion and how they form. You can also describe an isotope using its definition and talk about the physical and chemical properties of them.